Welcome back to another episode of Jailbreak Overlander. I'm Richie, and this is Jailbreak. And I was on the road for a total of five months, so I haven't put a video up in a while. I'm currently working on two, and this is one of them. Now, the truck took a beating over the last five months. We were in every type of conditions, from the east coast to the west coast, from north to south, absolutely everywhere, and she did it. This truck is big, she's heavy, and I ask a lot of her. I wheel her like I don't live out of her, and I make the repairs here and there in the parking lots when necessary. But I was a hundred miles from home and I had a problem that happened. And when I got home and tried to look up how to fix this, I couldn't find it. So I'm going to do a quick video to show you exactly what I couldn't find on the internet. And hopefully it's helpful to somebody else out there. So you're going to want to sit back. You're going to want to relax. And you're most definitely going to want to check this out. So before we get started, make sure you hit that subscribe and hit the little bell notification and hit all and you'll get all the videos that I upload or don't. Now, I was on the road for five months and I kept a journal, a video journal, and I'll leave a link below. There's 13 videos in total and there's more coming because I'm not done yet. But while I was on the road, I had the occasion to stop at several shops because the truck was having issues with this that and the other thing mostly the exhaust but i kept having a problem when i put the truck in gear it started to slam into first gear which it never did before and towards the end when i put it in park the truck would roll forward about a foot or so i talked to some master toyota technicians and everyone said it's your ring and pinion so I'm driving home, I'm about 100 miles from home, I'm getting gas in Connecticut. I put the truck in drive, and I hear a grinding noise like all hell is breaking loose. And I assume my rear drive shaft was laying on the ground. So I get out, I look under the truck, everything's still there. I pull the rear drive shaft, I lock the front hubs, and the truck goes. So I'm good to go. I'm assuming my rear end blew up. So after being that guy on the highway for 100 miles with my flashers on, I get home, I rest up, and I pull out my rear end. And there it is. So I took my rear end out because every mechanic I talked to said that the reason my truck suddenly stopped was because my ring and pinion must have shattered. And I did all this, I pulled out the e-locker, I took everything out in my driveway, which sucks only to discover my not even two-year-old RCV 300M axles. Look at that. I don't know how many Toyota mechanics I talked to and none of them called the drive flange because nobody really runs a drive flange in the rear end. You know what I mean? Ugh. That's your Toyota rear axle. And I'm really, really hesitant to put the 300Ms back in because, I don't know, man. They might be strong, but I'll tell you what, watch this. This is what I discovered all by accident. See 
like that. I knew there was a problem. And getting these off my truck took pretty much half the day. Because the cone washers were, they sit in these a lot further deep, a lot deeper than they sit in the stock axles. That was the issue the entire time. And I never even, I didn't think of it. And nobody else did either. And I've got a brand new set. I've had them sitting up there in my house. Fortunately, I had front wheel drive and I pulled my rear drive shaft and I made it home with front wheel drive. But even with this new flange on, I'm not too crazy about these teeth. They're flattened. And this is 300 M. This is, this is serious money axles, you know what I mean? I twisted the nitros. Man, I don't know. I don't know if I want to put these back on at all. I'm sure RCV will make good on it, but having this point of failure on the vehicle, yeah. Look at that. Totally junk. These need to be made out of something stronger, or this needs... I mean, this spline system, I don't know, not even two years. And I don't smoke my tires. I don't do any stupid shit like that. I crawl. You know what I mean? And for that to happen, that really sucked. Now, this is my drive side. This is the side when the truck is locked. And I didn't use my rear locker more than once in four months. That don't look too good either, does it? Yeah, I'm gonna put my uh, my factory axles back in. I never actually had an issue with them. I just upgraded them because I figured why not? That's what you do, you know, upgrade. Well, didn't work. Okay, so for the people that clicked on this to learn how to quickly check an e-locker, here's the deal. I put the entire rear end back together. I put the axles back in, but I never locked the rear end before I pulled the axles, which caused me quite a bit of problems because the rear end was locked. In my switch, there's a problem with the wiring. So I needed to get under the truck and manually jump it to unlock it. And I couldn't find anything anywhere to show you how to simply do that. Well, somebody helped me out and I figured it out. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's pretty easy. You pull the, you pull the female plug off your locker underneath you grab a 12 volt battery, you take a couple of alligator clips and a couple of tester probes, and you hit these two. Watch this. So this is the rear e-locker motor on a 9.5 Toyota rear end. And I recently did my gears. I mean, I recently pulled out my third member because I had an issue and the truck wouldn't go. Now, I had had a problem with my rear e-locker not engaging properly. And when you pull out your rear end, you're supposed to lock your rear end first in order to make this easier to reassemble. Well, sadly, I forgot that. I put my rear end back together and it's locked and my dashboard switch won't unlock it. So after a bunch of research, I found out how to manually unlock it using a 12 volt source. I didn't have a factory end to use. I simply used a 12 volt battery, two alligator clips, and the pins from a tester. And it worked perfectly. This'll work on your front locker, your rear locker, and your center dip. The top two to the left. Positive, negative will open, Switch them around or reverse polarity and it'll close them. It works like a champ. But I'll give you, I'll show you so you can see what I'm saying. I got this as good as I could, so it is what it is.
So there you go. I hope that helped out. I couldn't find a video showing me how to simply do that. They were all showing me to use a pigtail and wire it together, this, that, and the other thing. I took the battery under my truck. I did the top two left pins, looking at the female socket exactly as the diagram shows, and you're good to go. At any rate, if you enjoyed this video, hit that like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below, and I'll try to return the favor. I am out.